Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Seth Rook. I'm excited to tell you that I partnered up with Code Combat to bring your kid a learning opportunity. Back in my day, there was no one that could tutor me, I knew more than the teachers, and I had to put in the work because there was no other option. Unlock your child's coding potential with Code Combat's live online classes. The classes are led by experts who make learning an exciting and rewarding experience. With their help, your child will work through coding challenges and feel proud of their accomplishments. Personal attention and a structured curriculum will help your child become a confident coder. I always said that I hope that you learned something today and now your kid can. Follow the link in the description and enter the promo code EXPLORER10 at checkout for a 10% discount and all subscriptions have a 30 day money back guarantee. And this is one thing that was produced, I believe, before Seth Admin. So this is a predecessor and could be used if you have a Kubernetes cluster, but I don't think that it's the op uh, optimal way of running a Ceph cluster. So let's switch over to my screen here. Here is a Ceph cluster. You see that I have uh, 14 gigabytes used in my 30 gigabytes cluster. And this is a very complicated way of securely storing my Ubuntu image, of course. So I have a file system here with one ISO image, then that's everything I have on this <laughs> Ceph cluster. So how do we get here and how do we actually get back? That's the question. So first off, I would like to remove the installation fully and see if I can do that. So I want this to be gone in my Kubernetes cluster and I was wa wanted to do some changes and I couldn't do them um, because it's it didn't remember them. So if we go a diff here on git, we see that I have a provider or host in the cluster. And then I have also this enable rook discovery daemon. Uh, so those two changes I wanted to do to my cluster and they didn't actually fully um, go into effect if I didn't remove and uninstall the cluster, which I think is a really bad way of handling this because you can't just redeploy um, a cluster just because you want to do a configuration change, which is a little bit sad. But anyway, I wanted to do those two changes, so I needed to deploy this again. So what I did was that I first off deleted all the resources. So here we have a command that use cube control, delete all. You can uh, do it like this, put it in the top. Uh, so cube control, delete all, dash dash all in the uh, namespace rookseph. And rookseph is what rook is using in order to store all the resources. So if we run this command, it will uh, remove a bunch of stuff from our Kubernetes cluster. And when that's done, we also want to delete the namespace. We want everything to be gone. Sadly, not everything will be gone because there is a couple of common things that are stored in other namespaces that is not removed. Hopefully those configurations and those deployments are not really crucial to removing um, the actual cluster. Maybe those are just things that need to be there in order to deploy the cluster and not something that you usually change. So now I deleted all the resources here in the Ceph Rook, Rook Ceph uh, namespace. So now I can remove the Rook namespace. And now it says it is deleted and then it stops there because it will never be deleted. That, that's a big problem. So if I go here to one of my tabs and run uh, sudo cube ctl get um, mm, see namespaces. You see that it's terminating, but it will never terminate. I actually went away and came back and several hours later it hadn't terminated. So what I needed to do then is run this strange command here, 
Q uh, control, API resources, the verbs list, namespace, and then I want uh, the output of the name. And then the first argument is sent to into cube control get show kind ignore not found in this namespace rook. And if I do that, then I will get all the resources that are still there. So when you have run this command, you will get this kind of output that we have here. And we can see that we have a config map, we have a secret, we have something in the Ceph cluster rook. And we have something in the file system MayaFS that isn't really removed yet. And the reason is because the finalizers will never run. So what we can do is go in and edit each of these resources. So let's edit the file system first. And we can go in here and just remove the finalizer. And if we do that, while we still are removing the uh, namespace, then it actually will remove the resource. We will continue removing the resource because it realized that, okay, the finalizer is not there anymore. So now I'm able to remove this one. So if we go through each and every one of these and just tell them to ignore the finalizer because the finalizer is already gone at this point. So it doesn't really matter that it looks for it because yeah, we have deleted that resource already. So when I've removed all the finalizers and saved, this namespace will have been deleted. So now we have removed all the resources in the Ceph cluster, but we still have some common stuff. So if we install this again, the common stuff will be there. I guess that's fine, but we can at least change all the configuration. Another thing we need to do is of course go in and sap all the uh, old drives so they can be reused. So if we have three different nodes, then I can go in and uh, sap the extra drives here. So they will be ready for reuse. Um, but I want to show you how to actually set it up from scratch. So I will create a couple of new VMs and then I will rejoin you here and go through it from the beginning, how to install and K3 cluster and then how to install Rook on that. And we are back and I have now prepared three new virtual machines that are clean installs that we can start working with. And first off, we need the right tools for the job. And this is not it. It's just chocolate. So let's move on <laughs> to the other tools that I'm talking about and switch over to my screen here. So first off, we want to install curl. So we install curl on this machine here, the first one, and then we go on to the second one and to the third one. So we have curl on all of them because we need curl in order to run the script that installs uh, K3. So the or K3S. So we run the curl script with get K3S IO and then just execute it. If you install this in a production environment, of course, you should read the script and actually figure out what it does. So you don't uh, install some malware or something. But in a virtual machine that I will delete soon, I'm not really caring about that. Next up, we will look into the varlib rancher k3s server and the node token. And we need to do that with sudo. Here we get a token that we can use to install the other servers. So the, this is the token that is used in order to communicate between the first installed server and the other ones that should be connected to it. So I will copy that into my script here. So if we go to the second machine, I can put that in, which runs the same which here again, but it sets the K3 uh, as URL to node 16443, and then the KS token is the token that we got out and that we run that script. So if we put that in there, and the same goes for this one. Uh, not only the token, I need everything. So let's copy that again. There we go. So now it will install those two as well. And if we run sudo cube ctl get nodes, we see that we have three nodes ready to install stuff on. 
And first off, I want to have a dashboard so I can actually see what's going on. So I install that using this script here, recommended raw. So I get a dashboard account there. Then I will create a dashboard user. So this will create the admin user for the dashboard. Um, and then next up we will install see here the binding between the dashboard and the admin user and next we will fetch a token so this is the token we need to use in order to log in and if I copy this command in here like that we should be able to go to this server on this port in order to see the admin interface so let's go over here Jump into that, maybe it's an HTTPS, and we see the actual interface. We go back here, we copy this long token into here, and then we should be able to sign in. So here we can now see everything that is installed and work with our K3S uh, system. So this is good to have, not required for the actual Ceph Roken. But if you're running a cube a cluster, set it up correctly from the start. So that's the, that. Now we want to go through to Rook and install that. In order to do that, we need first to install Git. So we get that into our server environment here. And next up, we of course need to clone the Git repository of Rook which is at github slash rook slash rook and then it's a git repository so we'll download that single branch and we will take the branch of master so the latest of that we will jump into a directory called rook deploy examples so here we have a bunch of files if we look in this directory we have a bunch of yaml files that describes different part of the system that you could install what we want to start to install is some parts that are common. We, we want to install the CRDS YAML, the common YAML, which is a common uh, things that we did be installed outside of the cluster, and then the operator that is used in order to install the cluster. So we install all of those things first into our system, and then we will set up the default cluster after that. But first off, I want to actually go into the operator YAML and in here there should be something called, um, see here, uh, rook enable discover daemon. And here we can change the operator to true and this means that it will discover new OSDs when they become available. So when, whenever we see a new drive it will be available. And this is required in order to actually uh, see them in the interface in Ceph. So I want to change that, of course. Um, and then I will do a sudo cube ctl apply because it's already there. And then the operator YAML. So that will change that configuration. Um, yes, so it's now configured. Next up, I want to change the cluster configuration also uh, for, because there is one thing that I want to change in here and this is the provider because usually you use the Ceph cluster inside of your Kubernetes cluster and in my case, I really want it to be deployed in a way that I can actually use the resources in other servers in the rest of my network. So then I need to actually find provider and down here there is a suggestion of provider host. This means that the, ref the resources will be available on the host IPs as well. Which makes things so much easier and you can actually get to the admin interface and everything much easier that way. So I change that too and then I can create the cluster. So we put that in here. The Brook cluster is created. So if we now do run cube 
ctl get pods with the namespace of rook ceph we see that it's starting to create stuff and this will take a while so i will stop here and i'll get back to you whenever the full system has uh, deployed in the kubernetes cluster well that took a while uh, but i think everything should be deployed now and then for a, a couple of seconds so let's fetch the password for the uh, admin interface, then you run kube uh, control and then so, uh, re, re, rook ceph get secret rook ceph dashboard password and we get it in a, a json uh, path and then we base 64 decode it and we can echo it out so this is the password and they always create these kind of ridiculous passwords uh, but if we switch over to here we can go to one of the hosts and if you go to the wrong one you will not find anything on 8443 it's because it deploys two ho two um, managers and it's random where they actually end up so two of the hosts will have them um so let's log in here i'm pretty sure that that is not the password so let's try that again uh copy that on paste and then we are in so now we should be able to see our ceph cluster and let's try that again see if we no not the right one there we go now we could log in so here we can see that we currently have a status of okay we have a quorum with three monitors over three hosts we have two managers, one is standby. We don't have any file system. We have three OSDs already set up because they it found those drives directly. If we look at the cluster, we can see the host. We can see which services are deployed here. We can't look at physical disks. We can't look at the monitors. We can't look at so, um, services because we haven't set up the orchestrator yet. So go into the manager, uh, manager modules and change this to 100 so we see all of them we can go down to rook here edit it and here we can oh not rook edit we do rook and then we can enable rook so this will enable the the rook uh, manager and did that disconnect me from the server maybe uh, so let's try that again see if we can get in here yeah so now the rook manager is enabled then we can go into the um let's see orchestrator edit that and here we can say that orchestrator should be rook if we update that we are now running the orchestrator of rook if we look at hosts we should see the same things here when if we look at physical disks we can see all the disks and this is because we actually added that flag that tells us uh, that we will look for disks. Otherwise, it will not show that. We can look at the monitors again and services. Here we have a setup of services. In Ceph Admin, you could do changes here, but this is disabled in Rook. So everything is done by these kind of manifests. So you can't do anything in here. You can look at the OSDs, of course, crash map. So it's pretty much a standard Ceph cluster, but we have a little bit less of fun less functionality than we had with Ceph admin. So now we want to set up a file system. So let's switch over to my console here again, and then we can do sudo cube ctl um, apply dash f file system yaml. So if I run that, it will create a file system for me. Uh, this will take a little while as well, but after a little while, there will show up a couple of pools here, and then it will create the actual file system and set everything up for us. So now it has created the metadata servers. It had set up two full, uh, pools here, one MyFS metadata and one MyFS replicated. You could create the file system that is just, uh, that is using erasure coding. There is a script for that. So you can use that instead. 
And in the file system here, we see that we have MyFS and we have two um, MDSs running. So the file system is up and running. Now we need to get the password for it in order to use it on the outside of the cluster. There is a way of creating these kind of provisions inside of Kubernetes. There is even a script to just install a WordPress and have it running in your file system, but I will use it outside. So then I need to create this toolbox, which is used in order to log into and use Ceph outside of it. So here we have this tools and I need to start that tool. So I will get, uh, get into that particular uh, installation, bin bash. So here I can run commands. So here I will create a, a user for this file system like that. And then we have this password that I want to use in order to mount my system. So I will copy that into what I will put into my um, my FS tab here. I just need to add a couple of the, I can actually do like this. We'll show you soon. I'm just changing to use hosts names uh, in, because it was set up with IPs. So let's log out there. I will now go into etc FS tab. And in here, I will put this declaration. Uh, and I can't do that because I needed to do sudo. Sudo, there we go. And put that in there. So now I will use N1, N2, N3, and the port 6789, slash in the Ceph uh, file system, mount it to CephFS with the Ceph uh, type using the file fs user with the secret, no timeout, net dev, and then 0 2 as the last parameters for dump and pass. If we then uh, do sudo create directory cephfs and then sudo mount slash cephfs. Uh, wrong type, missing code page helper program. Hmm. Interesting. Let's try that again. Let's go over to using IPs instead. See if that works better for me. It should work with just the host names, but maybe I defined them incorrectly on this host. So there we have mounted it. We have CephFS here. And then we could beat get and let's see here, let's, and then we could v get the Ubuntu image again. Let's download the desktop, go to the homepage, download Ubuntu, uh, download this one, copy this link address, stop the download there, and then we get it down here with permissions of course. So now it's actually installing that Ubuntu image and if we go over to our Ceph cluster here we can see that we have a bunch of traffic, it writes to the system, it's adding to the actual file system in our Ceph cluster. So this was a way to set up Rook, configure it to use the hosts in order to set up all the ports and everything so you could actually use it outside of the Kubernetes cluster. And then we also co connected a file system to one of my uh, machines outside of the uh, Kubernetes cluster in order to put some files into it. Of course, you can use provisioning and, and I have explained that in a different video so you can go through how to use your actual Kubernetes Ceph cluster inside of Kubernetes. And maybe I do a follow-up video about this, how to use it with the Rook uh, setup as well, if you're interested. Uh, this was 
everything I wanted to cover in this video. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.